Howdy everybody, this is Stephanie from Apex Languages with another Words of the Week. This week on the 22nd, Wednesday, it's going to be Earth Day. And so in honor of the holiday, I wanted to try to find some vocabulary words that would match. I found two. And so this week we're going to talk about live and thrive. We'll start with live. I doubt that will surprise anyone when I say that this comes from Old English. It's been in our language a very, very long time. It was once pronounced Lifian or Liban, depending on what part of England you were in. And that's important because of the variations we will see later. In one of these, there's an F, and the other, a B, which is closely related to V. It had a bunch of different meanings, from the most basic, simply to be, to providing with you, your family with food, necessary for life, of course, and then even when referring to fire, to burn. I like that because fire is often used as a metaphor for life itself, a similarly powerful, inspiring, yet mysterious force. So why am I talking with you about live anyway? You should know what it means by this level of English mastery. Nonetheless, Many students still struggle with knowing how to pronounce it in different contexts, particularly when reading. I've been saying live for simplicity, but of course there are as many as six different variations of this word, starting with live, live, and life. Again, live, live, and life. What makes them different? Well, live is a verb. It's a state of verb, like to be and to have, which means it's not very action packed. Those uh, state of verbs mainly describe uh, people and things. Nonetheless, in a sentence, you need to use it like a verb. Live, on the other hand, can be either an adjective or an adverb. Uh, it describes things that are happening in that moment, in real time, in real life as opposed to like over the TV, which is not real life, right? Um, adjectives, of course, describe nouns, adverbs, describe verbs, adjectives, and other adverbs. So, you know, depending, you know, the, the part of speech might vary a little bit, but the pronunciation, as long as it's a descriptive word, is live. Finally, life. That's a noun, it's a thing, maybe not something that you can touch, but it's a concept. And so remember to use it in your sentences like a noun. Let's pronounce these again. Live, live, life. Live, live, life. One more complication, if I may throw that at you. Um, verbs, of course, in the third person singular, simple present tense, require an extra S. And so I live, sh uh, you live, he lives, she lives. So that's pronounced lives. The noun, on the other hand, follows a very common pattern in English uh, where the F turns into a V. Believe it or not, those two letters are very similar to each other. And so it helps uh, the tongue transfer to the S sound. All right. So you'll see it. Other words, another example is wolf, wolves, chief, chiefs. And so here we have lives. So keep in mind, even though these two words are also identical, they are, again, pronounced differently lives the verb he lives and lives he has many lives 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 now let's take a look at these words in action get you some sample sentences so the verb he lived excitingly in that home off of mostly beer and tobacco to the ripe old age of 89. here i'm using live in a variety of ways he lived excitingly Okay, so again, I need an adverb there because live is a verb. He lived in that home, right? 
So live is how you live, how you breathe and move and the things that you do with your life. It can also just describe where you are, where you dwell, where you sleep at night, okay? In a house, in a country, etc. cetera. Um, he lived off of beer and tobacco. What, uh, this goes back to the very old definition, right? Uh, from old English of uh, providing food for yourselves. So you live off of, hopefully not beer and tobacco, live off vegetables, right? Um, but you can use live in that kind of way. He lived to the ripe old age of 89. Okay, so just uh, describing whether or not something has the life, whether or something's heart is beating, right? So that's what I like about the sentence. It describes a couple of the different definitions that live has. But basically living is existing, breathing, doing things. Uh, your noun, his life was exciting. He made a living traveling the world, setting plant life in extreme conditions. So his life, the period that his heart is beating, that he is breathing, a life. So, you know, humans are alive, animals are alive, plants are alive, bacteria um, are alive. So, you know, just that the, you could talk about a specific life or the state of being able to live and breathe and, and do all of these things, okay? A living, this is a gerund, so it's a noun. When we talk about a living, uh, we're talking about a career, how you're making money. Again, how are you feeding your family? <laughs> Keep going back to that definition. So um, life is you're born, you live, you die, right? Everything before the dying part. That's life. Um, and then he made a living that has more to do with career. Adjective, tonight there will be a live interview with his wife who is still alive. So live again means describing something that's happening in real time, face to face sort of a thing. If you wanna describe that something has life, that something is breathing, that something has a, a, a heartbeat or, um, you know, their cells are working, I guess, in the case of a plant, then you would use alive. So live has a, uh, has a more specific meaning. The more general term, when we think of life, I live, I have a life, you would use the adjective alive. And then finally, the adverb, that's right, we'll be meeting with her live. So uh, again, that follows the other uh, definition of live in person, in real time, okay? Um, one more definition of life and living, uh, you know, if someone says, get a life, get a life, it, it kind of means to do things that have meaning. And so you have, it's a newer meaning, it's a less formal meaning, it's not very scientific, is more cultural. So you have the, again, breathing, heart pumping, moving, right, life. But then, you know, you live, but are you, did you really live? Did you have amazing experiences? This is a slightly different, more cultural meaning of the word life and live. Okay, so keep that in mind. Uh, alive, I felt really alive. Okay, you, you felt excited. You you were doing something with your life besides just breathing. So, a bunch of different meanings. You can keep those all in mind. On that note, let's move on to thrive. Now, the great news here is that there's only one pronunciation, and that is thrive. 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 What part of speech is it? It's a verb. And so that's kind of unfortunate now that we just finished talking about uh, live, right? So uh, live is the pronunciation again for adjectives and adverbs, but uh, the verb is live, right? Well, don't get confused, it's not thriv. The verb is thrive. So live and thrive. It also comes from Old English, thrifa, to take hold. 
and you know it originally meant to grow or develop strong. Um, this idea, Thrifa was grabbing something and holding it close to you, you know, protecting it, making it your own. As you, let's say a child, right? You hold your child close, you take care of them, and they thrive. Hopefully, if you give them a, a lot of a lot of love. Uh, a lot of care and just enough discipline, right? They will grow into big, strong people, both physically and, um, you know, and, and their character will also be strong. Very commonly nowadays, thrive is more general. It's used more general to describe doing exceptionally well. Succeeding, but not just succeeding, not like, oh, I did it. I'm done. Exceptionally, super duper well. So when you thrive, let's say you graduate high school and you go to college. Okay. Well, you know, you were in high school and you got C's and B's. All of a sudden you're in college and you're getting 100% on everything you're doing. You're thriving. Not only are you doing great on your homework, but you're making lots of friends. You're engaged in all the different activities. You're thriving. Thriving is going above and beyond. Okay, so not just doing well, but doing amazing. Here you can see in this sentence, her garden thrived and soon the squash was as big as her. Look at those veggies. They're too heavy. I prob they're probably no good to eat, <laughs> but they're huge. This is the sense of extraordinary, exceptional that we have with Thrive. They're not only are they doing good, they're doing better than good. Another sentence, our new reality of social distancing is painfully difficult for extroverts, but many shy individuals that don't normally like to leave their houses anyway are thriving. Eh, you know, um, it, it, it's, I, I think a lot of people focus on the, the people, people who are like, oh my gosh, I need to go and to the bar and go out with my friends. Well, what about people that like to stay home? I like to stay home. <laughs> um, you know, and so it is possible for some people to actually do well in situations like this. They do better when they're allowed to stay home and um you know work from home and do different things than they would normally so some people thrive while other people are doing terribly right? hopefully you're thriving i hope so uh finally a couple of synonyms for you to flourish flourish is like a flower opening you're flourishing and prospering you're doing well you're doing very very well all right so flourish prosper thrive. Time to practice. So, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you? What kind of environment would you thrive best in? So again, live is more neutral. It's a state of verb. So you're just describing where would you live? Where would you be? But where would you thrive? Gives you that, dip, that next level of not just being somewhere, but really being somewhere and making the most of it, succeeding amazingly, thriving. So you can answer this question or another question, again, in honor of Earth Day. What do plants need to live? What else can you do to help them thrive? So what do they need to live? What are the bare necessities for life? On the other hand, what? how do they thrive? How do they go above and beyond to be amazing, to be the best they can be? Uh, write something in the comments, email me. In the meanwhile, I'll let you get back to doing your thing. All right. So thank you as always for watching. Check out more videos at apexlanguages.com. I hope you thrive today. Have a happy, healthy, safe one.